Remember the meat dishes your grandparents raved about? From the royal tables to your screen, find out which meals were loved by past generations but have now vanished from dining culture. To start off, the classic roast beaver tail. Now, I know this one sounds a tad bit unusual right off the bat, but this meaty meal was once a cornerstone of survival for Native Americans and early settlers. Imagine this, trading a juicy steak for a flat, scaly beaver tail. But hey, survival is survival. They said it tasted like pork rinds, so maybe it wasn't as bad as it sounds. Beaver tails were roasted over an open flame until the skin was crisp and the fat underneath rendered down. Beavers were a crucial resource for Native American tribes, and they didn't let any part of the rodent go to waste, not even the tails. Roast beaver tail wasn't just sustenance. It was a delicacy among American Indians and trappers. The best part? It wasn't just finger-licking delicious, but also provided a high-energy meal for those braving the frontier. Today, it's almost entirely forgotten as chicken has taken over the dinner table. Jelly deals were a staple on the dinner table back in the 1900s. This dish was whipped up in London in the 18th century, when a bored chef decided to mix things up a bit. Here's the thing. Eels were dirt cheap back in the day, so they were everyone's favorite source of meat. The dish consisted of chopped eels boiled in a spiced stock and allowed to cool and set, forming a jelly. It was usually served cold and made a good substitute for dessert. Since it was light on the pockets, the English loved to serve it at dinner parties and festivals. It also made its way out to other parts of Europe such as Denmark and Sweden which came up with their own versions of the jelly. You won't find a lot of people talking about jelly deals now because it has largely disappeared from the British menus. But hey, if you're ever feeling adventurous enough, I say give this one a try. Straight out of the royal family's dinner table, Beef Wellington was a beef steak dish with the perfect regal twist. This delicacy was made of a tender beef filet coated with pâté and duck cells, then wrapped in puff pastry which made it just as fancy as it sounds. It was traditionally served with a rich red wine sauce such as a Madeira or Cabernet Sauvignon reduction. Now the origin of this meal is shrouded in history, but it is suggested that it emerged in England in the 19th century and was named after the Duke of Wellington. Arthur Wellesley. This steak required a lot of time and patience, which made it a meal for only the royals of England. It's a part of ancient history now, but you might be able to taste it if you make your way to Regal Balls or a Michelin star restaurant in London. Pressed duck, a French-inspired masterpiece, is just as complex as it sounds. The dish involves cooking a duck and then using a special press to extract the blood and juices, which are then used to create a rich, flavorful sauce. You heard that right? A sauce made out of blood and bone marrow. Now, before you wrinkle your nose, this dish was a showstopper at French restaurants back in the day, and its unique taste spoke for itself. The complex dish was a specialty of Rouen, and its creation was attributed to an innkeeper from the city of Duclair. It's also known as Canard à la Presse, and is a specialty of the Tour d'Argent restaurant in Paris. Cooking pressed duck isn't a job for the week, and requires special time and effort, which is exactly why it has become a rare dinner time on our tables now. And then, of course, not everyone has a knack for eating a sauce made out of bone marrow. Before chicken became everyone's favorite pie stuffing, rabbit pie was a favorite on the Easter table. Made out of tender rabbit meal, this savory pie was a household favorite in many rural areas. Rabbit meat is not only rich in flavor, but it's full of nutrients, which made this a healthy choice for many and a staple of the American pioneers. Plus, rabbit meat didn't cost a fortune like most meat back in the day and was widely available. Along with rabbit meat, ingredients of the filling of a rabbit pie typically included onions, celery, and carrots. Some English variations included prunes, bacon, and cider, while the Australians sometimes included the food paste Vegemite. Rabbits aren't as common as they were back then, so rabbit pie has vanished from our tables and Easter traditions. You know what they? All good things come to an end. Now, the French weren't fans of the rabbit pie, so they decided to whip up a pigeon pie instead. This delicacy dates all the way back to the 17th century when James Hart, a Scottish physician, wrote in 1633 that pigeon pies were usually served with far too much pepper. It became an instant hit after Hart's paper. 
and people started cutting down on the pepper a bit. This crispy dish was a savory game pie made of pigeon meat and various other ingredients traditional to French cuisine. The buttery crust made it a luxurious treat which was common on banquet tables. It was a tradition for wives to make pigeon pie after their husbands spent long days hunting for the delicious bird. But hey, tastes change, and so do our feathered friends. Ever wondered what the ultimate American comfort food was back in the day? Well, the only right answer is the veal and ham pie. This hearty pie combined the delicate flavors of veal with the salty goodness of ham. The pie's popularity surged during the Victorian era. It originated in the kitchens of English settlers and was a practical choice for using up leftovers, but soon became a meal for the elite. While it was a luxurious delicacy in England, it was a staple in large households in America. Not only was it easy to whip up, but was also cheap to make, which made it perfect for communal gatherings and large families. If you want to give your grandparents a rush of nostalgia, ask them about this meaty goodness and who knows your grandma might even dust off some cookbooks. Squirrel stew might sound unusual today, but it was a popular dish in rural areas. Yep, our bushy-tailed friends were once a common ingredient in many kitchens. Also known as Brunswick stew, it was a tomato-based stew generally involving local beans, vegetables, and originally small game meat such as squirrel. However, many variations from around the world used rabbit meat too. The origin of this meaty stew is controversial at best, as the states of Virginia and Georgia both claim its birth, with Brunswick County in Virginia and the city of Brunswick in Georgia claiming it was developed there. To keep things peaceful, let's just say Virginia and Georgia both played a role in creating this delicious stew. Squirrel meat was easily hunted and provided a necessary source of protein. With the rise of chicken, squirrel stew has fallen out of flavor. But hey, this one is pretty easy to whip up and will satisfy your Thursday night meat cravings like no other. If you think the beef heart is off limits for cuisine, you're wrong because stuffed hearts were once a celebrated dish. This dish sounds like something out of a horror movie, but it was actually quite common. Think of the beef heart cleaned, stuffed with a mixture of breadcrumbs, herbs, and often pine nuts or raisins, and then roasted or braised. Sounds appetizing yet? This economical and tasty meal was a testament to the nose-to-tail philosophy of cooking, where no part of the animal was wasted. In Europe, the practice of stuffing animal hearts dates back to medieval times. It was a popular dish amongst the working class in England, while it was reserved for the elite in France. Eating hearts isn't as common today, but if you ever tried this one, you'd understand the hype. Bear meat might seem like something out of a survivalist's handbook, but it was once a prized delicacy in many cultures. The roast loin of bear was considered a special occasion dish, reserved for feasts and celebrations. This dish has deep roots in the culinary traditions of the early American settlers. As you can imagine, hunting a bear was a daunting task, so this meal was a reward for bravery. Apart from the hunting of the bears, this one wasn't complicated to whip up. All you needed was the loin, which is the tender strip of meat along the backbone, which was often roasted over an open fire. Now, this is one meaty dish. Well, it doesn't take rocket science to know why this one has vanished from our tables. I bet you're not up to the task of hunting a bear, are you? Elk roast was all the rage for Native American tribes. Elk is native to North America and parts of Asia, and people have relied on it as a food source for centuries. You know back when cattle weren't common in the States. This roast was a favorite in regions where elk was abundant, and its sacred recipe was passed down from generation to generation. So, why was it such a hit back in the day? Well, apart from the tribe's sacred connections to the animal which made it a favorite, it was pretty easy to make too. It was often slow cooked over hot coals. Think of it as modern day barbecue, just without all the fancy grills and tools. Elk meat was replaced by more readily available options like beef and pork. It's a shame really because elk roast can be a delicious and healthy meal. Pickled beef tongue was a classic back in the day. Some love it, others, not so much. Now, before you jump to any conclusions, just hear me out because it's not as bizarre as it sounds. Yeah, beef tongue was found in many national cuisines and was used for taco fillings in Mexico and for open-faced sandwiches in the United Kingdom. Beef tongue, whether braised or pickled, 
was a versatile dish served both hot and cold. Believe it or not, it was a staple back in the day. It actually tastes pretty good if you close your eyes and pretend you're not eating beef tongue because that can sound a tad bit too much. It's not the healthiest meat though because beef tongue is very high in fat, which contributes up to 72% of its caloric content. It has become rare today, but you will be surprised to see how many places still sell beef tongue burritos down in Mexico. Yikes! While we're on the topic of bizarre meaty meals, hog's head cheese is another crazy one on the list. Now, don't let the name confuse you because the meal doesn't contain any cheese or in fact any dairy products at all. It is made with flesh from the head of a pig, typically set in aspic and usually eaten cold, at room temperature, or in a sandwich. The parts of the head used do not commonly include the brain, eyes, or ears, but everything else? It's all in there somewhere. This unique meat jelly originated somewhere in ancient Germany and instantly made its way to other parts of Europe. Many recipes use a bit of lemon juice to add a bit more flavor to the jelly. It's not a part of our dinner tables anymore, and I don't know about you, but a lot of people want to keep it this way. Can you imagine Thanksgiving without your grandma's famous turkey roast? Well, back in the day, roast goose was the traditional holiday dish. It was cooked using dry heat with hot air enveloping it evenly on all sides. Now, this is a dish I can get behind. Juicy, crispy skin, tender meat, and a flavorful stuffing. What's not to love? This dish was normally served with plum sauce to augment its flavor. It was particularly popular in England, where it was often served with applesauce and bread sauce instead. In Guangdong and Hong Kong, roast goose was a variety of siu mei, or roasted meat dishes, within Cantonese cuisine. It was made by roasting geese with seasoning often in a charcoal furnace at high temperatures. This dinner isn't common anymore, but with a little effort, you can still find fresh goose and recreate this classic dish at home. Perhaps it's time to give the good old goose a chance to shine again. Sheep's head stew. Now this is where things get a bit adventurous. This dish, once a staple in many cultures, involves cooking the entire head of a sheep, including the brain, eyes, and tongue. Yes, including. This one is a Scottish delicacy, also known as Pausaudi, and was whipped up in Edinburgh, Scotland. Don't confuse it with the other Pausaudi, which is a term for milk and meal boiled together. Dried peas and barley are other common ingredients used in this meaty dish. Sheep's head stew was often enjoyed in rural areas where nothing went to waste. Skinning the head and preparing it for the stew is a time-consuming task, and it can get messier, but if you manage to pull this one off, it is definitely worth getting your hands dirtier than usual. Braised oxtail is proof that our ancestors really knew how to make the most of every part of an animal. An oxtail typically weighs around 8 pounds and is skinned and cut into shorter lengths for this Italian cuisine. This meat is slow cooked in red wine and braised with vegetables such as carrots, tomatoes, and even lima beans. Oxtail is packed with collagen, so this dish was also used by many women of the Victorian era for younger looking skin. Many women used to throw parties just to serve it. They took eat your skin care to a whole other level. While the word once meant only the tail of an ox, today it can also refer to the tails of other cattle. Today, this dish is a gourmet delicacy, but back in the day, it was every middle-class worker's dream. Love it or hate it. There's no denying that haggis is a unique and iconic dish. So, what does this dish consist of, you may ask? Well, this Scottish dish is made from sheep's heart, liver, and lungs, mixed with oats and spices, and cooked in a sheep's stomach. Yes, you heard that right. Robert Burns' poem, Addressed to a Haggis, of 1786, made this meal Scotland's very own national dish and a literary classic. It is traditionally served with turnips and potatoes. Back in the day, haggis was popular everywhere around the globe, but it's limited to only Scotland now. While haggis might not be everyone's cup of tea, it's definitely a dish worth trying at least once. We're back to the basics with this one as boiled mutton. Who doesn't love some boiled mutton? This dish exists in almost every part of the world, with every culture having its own unique variation. The mutton was often placed in a large pot with root vegetables like carrots, turnips, and potatoes, slow-cooked until the meat fell apart 
and the vegetables were tender. This dish was the perfect meal to warm your insides on a cold winter day. Boiled mutton emerged as a common meal in medieval Europe, especially for the lower classes where it was cooked only using meat and water. Now, this one is slowly becoming more and more outdated as people usually go for more flavorful meats. But with the rise of Chinese hot pots, instant boiled mutton might just make a comeback. Corned beef and cabbage, a classic St. Patrick's Day dish, but did you know it was once a common comfort food? Known as salt beef in some Commonwealth countries, this American Irish dish was a hearty protein source and a staple on the table during the 17th through the early 20th centuries. It was tinned along with sugar and spices during World War I and World War II when fresh meat was rationed. Cabbage brought in the right amount of nutrients, making this meal not just delicious, but also a healthy choice. While still popular in some circles, corned beef and cabbage aren't half as famous as it once was. But if you're ever up for some good old-fashioned cooking, there are recipes for this one all over the internet and they're pretty easy to follow. And finally, we have stuffed lamb heart. This dish is another example of our ancestors' resourceful use of every part of an animal. This meaty meal also goes around with the unique nickname of love in disguise in many parts of England. While the origins are unclear, it first emerged in Kettner's Book of the Table in 1887 and took over Great Britain. The heart was cleaned, stuffed with breadcrumbs, herbs, and sometimes even minced meat, and then roasted or braised. This was a nutrient-rich meal which was a fulfilling delicacy after a long day of hard work. Though it's rarely seen today, lamb hearts are still common in many local dishes in South Asian countries. Do these classic meat meals stir up tasty memories? If so, like this video, click subscribe and stay tuned for more nostalgia trips.